April of 2022, Mac bought this 79 series Land Cruiser. But there's a bloody problem. Uh, well, we're meant to be on a beach at the moment. Oh, no, I just wanted to pull this out for fun. So having a highly modified engine with a lot more power requires much stronger components. Oh, this is amazing. It's gearbox. But how do you get a manual Toyota gearbox to be able to handle that much power? You don't. You convert it. You put an automatic in, eight speed, automatic. Believe it or not, out of a BMW. But how? How do you do it? <laughs> so this is something I think a lot of people will be interested in. Having the automatic in for over six months now, I thought we'll do a six month review. It's probably more like seven. <laughs> Just let us know how it's going, how it's performing, and what I've done with it. You have the questions, we have the answers. Max was the first in the country to be finished and converted with this eight speed. He's kind of the guinea pig, if you will given the unusual task of trying to break it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are cruising around in comfort mode. So basically just showing you guys what it does um, when it comes to shifting, low RPM, down gearing, slowing down, it does it all for you. It does engine braking for you. It's it's, um, it's pretty cool, the converter locks up all on its own. Um, yeah, so this is just chilling. But how many cruise owners you know can just uh, drive with their left arm on the steering wheel and their right arm just, you know, resting? You know? Two, two arms on the wheel, mate. Oh, no, sorry, two hands on the steering wheel at all times. I, I apologise, officer. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, because normally your hands down here going, oh, yeah, where's second gear, mate? No, oh, where's that? <laughs> You're normally fighting. Oh, that's fighting. right, I blew third up. <laughs> nah, so, it, yeah, it's super chill. Yeah, we're in six right now, we're doing oh, 50. So, um, yeah, it's, like I said, super chill, you don't even feel it shift. You, you can see it down gearing on the slowdown, all I'm doing is touching the brake. And, uh, yeah, that's comfort. Yeah, um, you can't really feel gear changes, you can make it very smooth. Yeah, that's why we set up the two cameras, just to show you that it is actually changing gears. Head out here, I think it goes up to about 80 out here, and then, then we might do a zero to 100 run, and we'll put it in sport, show you how sport goes. Um, sport's pretty cool, especially on the beach in high tide. Uh, just, it knocks it back a gear straight away going into sport, and it also just, it shifts later, it keeps your RPMs higher, and. Oh, it's oh, we nearly crashed too. Oh, blowing up. Anyway. Blow up, mate. There's about 50% throttle, just to, uh, you know, what like roundabouts are like. People are crazy out here. It's absolutely, it's just it's like being in the zoo on the street today. It's just animals everywhere. <laughs> Uh, when should we go to sports? Sports heaps fun. Well, on the way out of this roundabout, you can come out real slow and you can give a little Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll go into sport. So you just shift the beamer, shift it across into sport. See how it's holding gear now? And it's shifting a bit harder. So, so there we go. So that was 100% throttle. Uh, you, you saw it shift back quick and just pin it and it's just banging gears boom 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 and then now it, it wants to still wants to go is the problem <laughs> uh, so i'm back to quarter throttle we'll give it half and it's just ready to rumble so and then that is the standard sports mode and then you can change tune to the more aggressive manualize sport mode where you can shift with the shifter but I won't I'll let it do its thing and we'll 
we'll just give her a squirt. And it really shifts hard in those higher RPMs. Yeah. It's fucking. You can see the camera um, jolt on the gear change. <laughs> it's just it's like. It's a very it's aggressive gear change. Bang, bang, bang. It's, it's freaking cool. And it's. Oh, we're in manual mode, so it wants to. And then we just tap down. There we go. Tap down. Seventh. Or we just double tap. Or fifth. Fourth. So that's that's many mode. Sorry, the GoPro's moving because it's attached to the shifter. <laughs> uh, we'll go back to normal sport mode because not quite as wild. I normally go normal sport mode for beach driving, just on high tide, low tide, you just drive it in comfort, in normal mode. And yeah, uh, what more can I show you guys? While we're cruising out to the zero to 100 spot, uh, we just talk about the heat. Um, you'll notice it's got the temp gauge on the, on the display you guys are seeing. And mine's sitting at 56 degrees, even after a few pulls, that's pretty low, so what, we learnt with mine, which we haven't done yet, is, well, we, the boys, is they're actually putting a thermostat in to stop the oil cooler at the front because it's too good. They're staying too cold. So optimal is 80 to 90 degrees, basically engine oil temperature. So um, you want everything around that same temp. So they've put a thermostat, I believe, kicks in at around 75 degrees and then it puts it through the oil cooler. I could be wrong. Look, I haven't had any dramas with mine running cold, so it hasn't really bothered me to take it back to get that done. To my next point, the hottest temp I've, I've managed to get it. It was on the beach it would have been, yeah? Yeah, up the beach, we were on high tide for an hour at least, pushing soft sand the whole way. I've got 37 inch tires. Um, it's all pre-rego, it's legal, don't jump on me. The highest temp we saw was 105 degrees, and I think, 110, 115's where it, I think 115 it might go into limp mode, I think the boys were saying. You never, but, you never but it never went over that. It sort of got to that and that was it. That, and it, it was, it, it was uh, a long, long call. Oh, it was well over an hour pushing soft sand with big tires and yeah, so super impressed that it doesn't overheat. I know a few other gearboxes of mates of ours, uh, one was an Allison actually, just kept overheating in the high, high, um... Oh, as soon as it hit the beach, really. <laughs> as soon as it got to it's sand, it high. overheated. It actually, you're right. A bit like the LN. <laughs> yeah, a bit like the LN. Yeah, it didn't like it too much. It gets bloody hot. Towing is the next one. I've done a fair bit of towing, mostly my drift car. It's not overly heavy, probably only a couple ton with the trailer. And, but Buckner took this for a while, uh, the 8-speed boys, and they were towing a massive fully enclosed car trailer full of tool, tools and a race car. Bloody tows like an absolute dream. Does everything I wanted it to. SD card. Just this car in general is, since the auto's gone in, I've just been, it's just such a pleasant car to drive. It's, even though it's still loud and obnoxious, but <laughs> it just is so nice now. Just, it feels like the hundred plus thousand dollars you spend on them. I know people are going to rip us to shreds about that, and it's silly the amount of money you got to spend on these cars, but the only V8 turbo diesel solid axle. solid axle car that you can still buy brand new in Australia, this is your only only option, really. Uh, I think you can maybe get the F-Trucks now, imported, I don't know. Please. Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> All right, zero to 100. In sport mode. Okay. Zero to 100. Let's go. Oh, I'll let this car get a bit of distance because I'm pretty fast. <laughs> oh, there's another one coming. Oh, just so everyone knows it is 100. So we can it is 100. 100. Ready, steady, go. Woo! Oh, we're back in comfort mode now. We were in sport. That's the other good part about sport, just flick it straight over. When it's in sport, you can change the tunes. I think I think it comes with like four, and um, but you only really use two, to be honest, which is just sport and back. That's all I use. Heavy loads in the back. So besides towing the trailers, just yesterday I had my 6.7 litre Cummins I purchased in the back. <laughs> yeah, we had it on the, on the forklift. It was 
530 kilos. It was like I wasn't even on the back. I will admit I haven't done like a four ton caravan or something like that. Oh, besides the day to day cruisiness of having an auto, it just makes everything easier like recovering cars, banger in sport mode. You don't have to worry about shifting gears, losing momentum in the sand. It's just shifting through. You just get more momentum. You're ripping cars through, so. That's been an, another positive. Fuel economy is heaps better because you have a way higher top gear than the five-speed manual. As well as that, the torque converter locks up automatically. You don't have to press a button or do anything silly like that. So that helps con conserve fuel, I think. Uh, I don't know if it's gear six, seven, and eight, I think will lock up automatically. And it also drops, I think it was like 200 RPM at 100 due to the gear ratios. So you've actually got a lower first gear ratio and a higher top gear ratio. So there's eight of them. <laughs> there's eight, so you'd, you'd expect them to, it's got like two overdrive gears, so. You'll get better fuel economy, so that's another a positive. Have you, have you measured it, the actual 100K fuel economy? Well, I did, uh, sort of, because I originally had stock diff ratios on my 37s. Oh, it was probably. it wasn't fully comparable um so i've now gone to 488 diff ratios instead of 39 so it's a huge jump but literally all the stones brought my rpms back to where a five speed manual was anyway so uh the 37s also helped with that as well so it's it's a little bit different but from what from what the guys with the stock tires have been saying it's huge fuel gains so it's been good European gearboxes aren't always designed to go in mud or under water. Well, no, but the, the boys have fit a AN fitting to the breather hose and run an AN line up into the engine bay. So rather than uh, just the crappy little breathers that they've got, it's made it fully submergible, which we have done in Tassie. It's well and truly enough to for water to get in everywhere, that's for sure. So that was a good test. Also been through some quick dips of water, but the probably the biggest one was down in Tassie, yeah, when we submerged it and got absolutely stuck. <laughs> that was a big hole too, like this is a this is a big U and uh that was a big hole. <laughs> I, I was a big hole, I was well, I was well under so <laughs> I have had it up to bonnet water as well, um, but it wasn't it submerged for you know six minutes, it was pretty quick. Yeah, it's the first one, Mark 1. They, they made a few changes to some adapters after that just to, to shorten it up a little bit more using complete stock tail shafts so you don't have to modify tail shafts and things like that. I literally picked it up from getting converted, drove it all the way to Tasmania. Nice and close then. Super close. Pretty much untested, driven up and down the, the road a few times. And um, I thought, we're pretty far from home, we should probably go easy on it, hey. <laughs> No, I, um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, like a champ. it handled every, luckily handled everything like a champ and is still going to this day. So, <laughs> same gearbox, nothing. same gearbox. We dropped the oil when we got back from Tassie just to check it out and it was all fine. Yeah, it's still exactly how it was <laughs> since the day I picked it up. A good point to talk about is the BMW shifter. So, I originally had the ratchet shifter in here, uh, which I've also got in my drift car because I've A-speeded my drift car. It's like a race car style shifter. It's very much a race revert, like it's a ratchet. It's a ratchet up, down shifter. It was just off-roading was an absolute pain in the ass because you have to go up to neutral, double tap up to reverse, and then back down to drive. If you uh, miss your timing. Oh, if you miss your timing, then you- you Quadruple you, five taps. You smash it up like heaps and heaps and so, off-roading it was just I, I didn't as cool as it was like you feel like a race car driver <laughs> it just wasn't practical so this like to just be able to like sip a coffee and, whoop, and there you go you're in drive like it's and oh reverse and like my shed's pretty tight too so i've got to do about a you know the turning circles on these 79s guys i've got to do a 20 point turn again yeah it makes all the world like a world of oh and, and these actually shift into reverse while you're rolling too so, so that this entire console came with the 
So yes, yeah, so this is this is uh, this is an option that you can have with the conversion, uh, which is the eight-speed console with the Beamer shifter. It's real rigid, like real tight, real durable. Is the word. Durable. <laughs> it would pass Whistling Diesel's durability test. <laughs> I put a couple power ports in the back as well. Um, I added that, and I also added the. I think it comes with this panel, but I added the red arc. But brings me to my next point. I've also eight-speeded my RB30 <laughs> drift car. Ha! Ha! ha. We, right, we're, we're back at the other shed that you guys don't know about. Um, <laughs> and Pecky makes the shirts and helping each other out. Anyway, I've got a bit of storage. So, gonna have a look at the drift car that I eight-speeded as well. So the eight-speed boys also do a lot. They're all drifters, <laughs> that's how they started. It was, it was just a, they were on the beers and went, oi, we wanna see if we can put an eight-speed in your cruiser. And, they did and it turned into a magical thing that everybody loves, so, <laughs> which it is, it's great. Still clutch kick, drift, drift corners. I actually have the clutch hooked up in my cruiser as testing purposes. This isn't for public use because they don't want guys going full drive clutch kicks that I may or may not have done on the sand. Um, actually, I might just show you how, that it actually works. So, so that's clutch in, I'm in reverse. I'll let the clutch out slowly oh, yeah, yeah. and then I'll the clutch in, clutch out no sim. GPS location and then I'll go drive, same deal. Oh. <laughs> Once you've got clutch out, you can just keep hitting the gear stick up and it'll change gear. External power yes, yes. So you don't actually have to use seconds. the clutch. It's very much more for drifting just so you can clutch kick it, yeah. basically. I'll do a bit of a rundown of what's going down in here in the later episode. Doing a bit of a reno on the shed. So. But this is the RB30 drift car with the A-speed auto. Step in. <laughs> so this is the shifter that was in my cruiser. It was a bit longer. But yeah, it was neutral, reverse, back to drive, neutral, back to drive. So off-road, it was just a bit, bit much going on. <laughs> but in this, it's friggin' sick. <laughs> Only negative so far I've had is just the ratchet shifter. Not that it didn't work or anything, it just wasn't very practical for me. Other than that, I haven't been able to fault it. I haven't had an issue and it's it's been good. I haven't heard many reports different from anyone else. So mine is a second-hand box, unopened. Don't even know what kilometers it had on it. So I asked the boys to message me the exact dot points just so that I didn't I'm not going to lead you guys astray. The base price for a used transmission on a fairly stock cruiser, obviously not one that's got crazy modifications and stuff, is $22,950 plus labor. As I said, majority of guys are optioning them up to the 30K mark. So that's like your, your consoles, your, you can do a built, like a fully upgraded built gearbox that can handle even more power. Where you can get it, so the website is 8speed.au. The cruiser kits have their own category. There's also drift car kits for all the different RBs and JZ motors and ALS and so on and so forth. As for when they're available, they're currently taking payments for November installs. They're a bit backlogged with the installs, as you can imagine. A little bit of a wait, well worth it. But if you're in some of the other states besides Queensland um, or even North Queensland, they have some dealer representatives that are buying and installing the eight speeds now. So get in, get in contact with them through the, so you can get in touch through the contact form on the website. So that is your best form of contact. Cause as you can imagine, the guys are been getting flooded uh, with stuff. So rather than answering a million calls and forgetting it, if you get in touch through that, it, they can, they can, work it all in order and it keeps life a lot easier. That was just a little bonus episode, just to- Sure was. <laughs> Where did you come from? It's about time you got here, Jesus. Just an honest review of how it's been going. It is the original setup that's been in the car since they put it in. Still going strong, still very impressed. What are your thoughts? It's very impressive, it hasn't broken. Spot up, <laughs> exactly what he just said. <laughs> Welcome back to the, to the episode too, uh, TJ. <laughs> We get asked all the time all these questions, so that's why we thought we'd make a video about it. Buy the merch! Oh, sorry, keep this guy in business. <laughs> Buy the merch! Buy the merch! <laughs> Buy the merch so I can afford a chiropractor. <laughs>